Haley. I heard that you're into cooking right now, so I decided to every week send you a video of me teaching you a recipe, kind of like our own little cooking show, basically. Um, so every week I'll be sending your mom a new video and you get to follow along. And I hope you enjoy this. This is episode one of, I guess, quarantine cooking, what I'm gonna call it. Um, so this week we're gonna be making crepe Suzette. I learned it in while I was in France and it's a really easy recipe and I really think you're gonna like it. Um, so all you're gonna need is some flour, some eggs, sugar, milk, melted butter, orange juice, brown sugar, and vanilla. And here we go. So the first step is to make the crepes. So you're gonna crack two eggs in a bowl. I have a measuring cup with a spout so we can pour it very easily in the pan. So you're gonna crack these into the bowl. That. We're gonna whisk that up real quick. Beat these eggs. And this is a really easy recipe. You can have it for breakfast or even put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it and have it for dessert. All right, so we're gonna take some milk. And we're gonna add You're gonna add about a half a cup of milk. Half a cup of milk and the eggs. And that's all the milk you're gonna need. Now, mix those eggs and milk up. Now, this is a time where you would start heating up your pan. You need it real nice and hot. So, get your frying pan and get it nice and hot. You don't have to put any butter yet, just get it nice and hot. So I have it on medium heat. All right, back to our eggs. Now we're gonna add a fourth a cup of water. Take the water. There we go, fourth a cup of water. Have a fourth cup of water, mix that up. Now, crepe batter is very thinner. It's much thinner than pancake batter. So, if you're wondering why this looks so watery, it's not you, it's supposed to be like that. It's not as thick as, um, Pancake batter. So now we're gonna take our flour. Now, crepes are very, um, you can change whatever you need to change. You can substitute whatever. It's, very for, it's a very forgiving recipe. Now, I have a cup of flour here. I'm using a fourth of a cup to scoop in my flour, but you can use a spoon or get the measuring cup right in there. Now, I'm using bread flour because that's all we have, but you can use any flour you have and it'll still work with bread flour too. We're gonna take a knife and level off our flour. 
Now, you really should level off your flour with a knife like that. It makes a big difference. Put in your flour into your egg, milk, and water mixture. And that is all the flour we're gonna need as well. Just one cup. Great. Whiskey business. There we go. Now, if it is too thick, you can add a tablespoon of milk or water um, to, to thin it out a bit. You want it kind of like a, you want it as thick as, I guess, like eggnog. Eggnog is pretty thick. That's kind of like the thickness you're looking for. So I have it right here, see how th thin it is? That's what you want. I don't know why I decided to use a very tiny whisk, but. All right, you can, our pan has been heating. You can turn down the heat to low. Crepes take, they, they cook slow, they cook on a slow heat. You don't want it to be super duper hot when you cook a crepe, or it's gonna be hard to um, spread out the batter onto the pan. Okay, now we're gonna stop mixing. Don't over mix, mix your batter either. That'll change the texture of everything. All right. We have our, the heat on low. We're gonna take what is this? a teaspoon of melted butter. And we're gonna put it in the pan. Spread it around. Now you can spray on pan. You can use um oil, a little bit of a teaspoon of oil in the pan. You're going to pour your batter in about the size of an average pancake. We're going to let this cook on low heat. It does take a little while. All right. Get a plate on the side ready. on the side. Now we're going to flip. Take a spatula and get it nice underneath and flip. This is what it should look like. You don't want it super brown. It's not like a pancake. You're not looking for golden brown. You just want a little bit of color. Now this one did come out a little bit thick and that's okay. Now, have a little bit of sugar on the side ready, because once we take it off the heat, we're gonna put sugar on it right away. That's our filling. A very popular filling of a crepe in France is plain sugar. And because it's so hot, it melts the sugar and it becomes really nice and really gooey. It's really good. You can also put Nutella in it, but with the sauce that we're gonna be making later for the Suzette part, I wouldn't recommend using the chill. All right, take your crepe off the heat, put it on your plate flat, just like this. Take a little bit of your sugar and just sprinkle it on the whole thing. Now, you can use as much sugar as you like you don't need a lot because of the sauce that we're gonna be making. That will have a lot of sugar in it. So you don't need a, a whole lot of sugar. Batter, now I'll show you how to spread it around one more time. So, pour it in your pan, just like that. And right away, move your pan around. 
it should take the size of the whole bottom of the pan, but if that's too big, feel free to use a smaller amount of batter. All right, so just do this with the rest of your crepes. Keep filling it with sugar, and then your plate should all fill up with these little crepe triangles. All right, um, another tip. Crepes also don't take that long to cook on each side. And they should be fairly thin. If yours is breaking when you flip because they're too thin, you can add a little more batter, thicken it a little bit. Um, be patient with it, all right? Go slow while flipping. The more practice you have with flipping it, the better you'll be and you can go a little more faster because it's very hot. Just be patient with it if it breaks. Um, a broken crepe is much easier to fix than a broken pancake. If your crepe breaks in half while flipping, lay it flat, flip it, but add a little bit, take a spoon and put some batter in the crack and it'll seal it up real fast. So it's much easier to seal up a broken crepe than a broken pancake. Crepes are much more forgiving. All right, take your crepe on the plate. Your sugar. Now, if one side looks prettier, you can always put the sugar on the less pretty side and then fold it so that the pretty side is on the outside. Like I did just now. So now I have two. Another tip to know when your crepe is done cooking is when you pour the batter on, the top will be shiny. Once the top isn't shiny anymore, you can flip. So you're not really looking for bubbles like you are in a pancake. We're looking for not better. I'll show you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna pour in my batter to see how the top is shiny. Once the top isn't shiny anymore, then flip. All right. All right. Now that you have your plate of crepes. You're gonna make the sauce or the Suzette part. So you're gonna take three tablespoons of melted butter, butter in the same pan. Same pan. One, two. Now I'm gonna do about two and a half, but if you, if you wanna use three, be my guest. All right. Now we're going to get three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. I'm going to do two and a half, but if I want to use three, go right ahead. Off the heat too, this is off the heat. Just by using the heat that is already in the pan. Okay, we're gonna stir that on very low heat, super low heat. Okay, stirring constantly because you don't want to burn the, your sugar because sugar burns very easily. So does butter. So keep it moving. Don't let it sit for too long. Um, this part gets a little wild, this the Suzette part. So make sure you have your mom or dad with you. Um, if you also look up a video or a recipe of crepe Suzette, you'll notice that, I'm, I did turn up the heat of just a little bit, but still low. Um, you'll notice that in the Suzette part, you're supposed to flambe the crepes. We're not going to be doing that. 
because the next time I see you, I want you to have your eyebrows still on. Um, if you ever, when you're older, if you want to learn how to close and stuff, I will definitely teach you. But, uh, when you're older. So stirring constantly your butter and sugar. I did turn up the heat just a tiny, tiny bit, but it's still very low. Alright, now our sugar is starting to heat up. It's not dissolved yet, that's okay. Move your pan around a little bit. We're gonna add some brown sugar. So I have brown sugar here. We're gonna add three tablespoons of brown sugar. You don't have to pack it either. I'm doing two and a half, but the recipe that I learned called for three tablespoons. Okay, anybody I'm doing three. All right, three tablespoons of brown sugar. We're gonna serve it up. We're gonna add one more tablespoon of butter because it's getting a little dry. Well, actually, no, we're gonna add, never mind. Don't add another tablespoon of butter. We're gonna add four tablespoons of orange juice. This is the funny part. So four tablespoons of brown sugar. It's of orange juice now. The mixture should be a little dry on your on the pan because the brown sugar absorbed all that butter. But with adding the orange juice, it'll thin out a little bit. Okay. And let it sizzle. That's why we have it on low heat. Two, three, please have your mother by because it's bubbling because the sugar and orange juice is caramelizing. So please have your mother by or father. Just have someone around. And that's four. You might add another one later. Stir that up real good. All right. Now we're gonna switch from, we're gonna use our whisk now. Get, make sure there's no lumps in your sugar. We're gonna turn up the heat to medium. Get the sugar, you want the sugar to be bubbling, okay? careful because you don't want it to brown. You don't want it to get any darker than it already is. So it'll be bubbling. So it should look like this. Stirring constantly. It will smell amazing because of the orange juice. Now it is going to be splattering so be very careful. Stirring constantly. All right, bring down the heat back down to low. Let it chill out. Make sure all your sugar is dissolved. All right, now what we're gonna do is turn the heat off because we're gonna be adding some more stuff to this sauce, okay? Add a teaspoon of butter 
with this teaspoon. That'll hold all the bubbling real quick. Stir that in. It should just look like melted brown sugar. It shouldn't look burnt. It smells very good though. Now you can make this sauce even without the crepes. And it'll taste really good. We're gonna add a very tiny bit of vanilla. You don't really want to taste it all that much. So this is like a fourth of a teaspoon very little bit and then you're gonna also add in either lemon juice or lemon extract it'll bring out the citrus and the orange juice just a little bit or you could do both if you have both all right we're gonna add in one more one or two more tablespoons of orange juice, all right? You can put the heat back on to medium low. I'm gonna do one teaspoon and a half of orange juice. And add a tablespoon, not even a tablespoon, like a small pinch of sugar. Whisk that up. Now we're gonna bring it to high heat now. Be very careful with this high heat. It's gonna start bubbling. You're gonna start seeing bubbles in the bottom. Let it start bubbling. And then the fun part. Again, we're not gonna be flambeing these crepes. I don't want you to get hurt or burn down the house. Okay, it's gonna start bubbling, stirring constantly. Down to low. And now we're gonna add in our crepes. So on low heat, Add in all of your crepes, okay? I have six crepes, so I'm only gonna be making, be putting in like four at a time, maybe. I have three at a time, okay, that's okay. You don't have to fill in all, put all of the crepes in at once either. Move the pan, you don't want to stir. Just move the pan back and forth on the stove. It's still on low heat. Because you don't want to heat up the crepes, you're just warming them in the sauce. All right, I'm gonna get another plate. your finishing plate, all right? So the presentation will be a little better. So take your spatula again, and fish out your crepes. And then you can plate them however you like. the ex excess sauce drip off a little bit. And then you can go ahead and cook the rest of your crepes. Burn your 
myself like I just did. Move around your pan, you can bring it back to medium low. Okay. Be patient and just keep moving the pan so they don't stick to the bottom. Warm them up a little bit. Alright, you can finish plating your crepes. And then turn off the heat. sauce you have left you can put in a little dish and you can refrigerate it save it and then warm it up if you want to put it on ice cream or you can put it on toast you can really do anything with this sauce all right i hope you enjoyed and please send pictures of what you make i really want to see what i really want to see what you make i hope you enjoy this is the first episode of probably many of quarantine cooking with me. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Hi Amy, I just wanted to say one last thing. Remember, you're no Gordon Ramsay. I'm no Gordon Ramsay either. He's not going to come through your kitchen and get mad at you if you messed something up. Just keep trying and if you, some a crepe breaks or I don't know, you let the, the sauce sit for a little bit, it's okay. It's okay. No one is going to come through your window and bust through your house and tell you that it's bad or horrible. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Nothing is impossible. Just keep practicing and you can do it. I wholeheartedly believe in you. So just keep practicing. Don't ever give up, all right? Don't let anyone tell you that you can't cook because in Ratatouille, anyone can cook, even a rat. So um, I hope you have fun. And please don't be hard on yourself if you mess something up. All right. All right. I will see you next time. <laughs>